Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Daily Magic. My name is Slytherin Knight, and I am so happy you could join me. So today's daily quest is to cast 20 white or blue spells. Finally we get this one because I can show off the Azorus Detectives deck used with cards only from the new set. Now, the, as you can probably guess by the name of this deck, it has a heavy focus on detectives. A lot of our cards either benefit from detectives being placed, you know, being put onto the field, such as a perimeter enforcer, whenever another detective enters the battlefield under your control, and, or, you know, this card gains plus one, plus one until end of turn. The other aspect of this is whenever a detective is turned faced up from its disguise, you know, our, some of our cards benefit from that as well, such as perimeter enforcer. Whenever a detective you control is turned face up, it gets a plus one, plus one until end of turn. So, not bad. What else? What else? But, I mean, that, and that's kind of the main thing, is that it's based on, you know, playing detectives or turning detectives face up from, uh, from disguise. There is a card, I cannot remember what it was, but it's an enchantment card. Um... Eh, forget that. Um, I, I lost my train of thought. But anyway, like I said, main focus of this deck is detectives. We have a lot of flyers in here, like with uh, Mistway Spy, Perimeter Enforcer, uh, Wojak, or Wojak, Wojak? Yeah. Investigator is another one. Um, Gold Case Cracker. This is not my favorite card in this set. Um, if something were to be removed it would probably be this cold case cracker it's a four it's a four cost three three flyer and when it dies it creates a clue and a clue token which pairs in nicely with the main rare of the stack urzim agency chief um for one you for one mana you can sacrifice an artifact and ezram gains you know your choice of vigilance lifelink or hexproof until end of turn not bad you know, not bad, all things considered. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, not much really to say. I do like, you know, Private Eye is in here to just give all of our detectives a nice little bump. And also its ability, whenever you draw your second card each turn, a uh, target detective can't be blocked. This pairs nicely with Projector Inspector. Uh, whenever it or another detective enters the battlefield under your control, and whenever a detective you control is turned face up, another one of those, you may draw a card if you do discard one. So that would pair nicely with Private Eye to activate that ability. I'm pretty sure that's the only way we have that. Insider choice. All right. That's yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, hopefully this goes well. I have used this deck once or twice on my own. I don't think I've done an episode with it. If I have, I've completely forgotten it. But yeah, hopefully this goes well. Hopefully this goes well. If it doesn't, that's okay. I, like I said, I have used it. I have won a few matches running this deck. Um, it's a bit different from my normal play style because you do have to be considerate of actually sending things in um, disguised, face down. And that's just not something that I think of right off, you know, right, right off hand. Because a number, a number of the cards actually have abilities based on turning them face up. You know, mainly like uh, removing an opponent's creature from the board, sending it back to their hand, stuff like that. But like I said, we'll see how this goes. Not a terrible start, actually. I forgot about this. Case of the Pilfered Proof is a nice one. Whenever a detective enters the battlefield under your control, you know, they get a plus one, plus one counter. So that's not bad. It's actually a good thing to start with. Yeah, it's a decent card to start with if you don't have anything to do on your first turn. Because now, at least for the first three uh, that I send in, they'll get a bonus. Which I think is nice. So, like, we'll be sending in Market, Market Watch Phantom. 
The reason we did this one is because whenever a creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under your control, uh, Market Watch Phantom gains flying. So if they do, perchance, play a creature, like Topher or Stomper, it wouldn't have been able to block us anyway, but now it really can't, so... Or they can just get rid of the card. That's... Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. Does it really matter? I'm gonna do this one. Mainly because it will, it'll trigger... It'll give me some more stuff to play with, which gives that a bonus. There's not much we can really do at the moment. I will admit, I was kind of relying on... If I, when, I, when, I, when I send in Private Eye, it'll be able to um, take... I'll be able to attack my detective here. They, If they block, they'll lose a card, which is fine. I hate taking that damage. Go here. What is your ability? Oh, right. Detective can't be blocked this turn. Let's go with you. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm, I'm gonna go all out. No sense in doing that since I wouldn't be able to benefit from it. See, the sad thing is, because of the virtue of persistence, they're just gonna be able to pull that right back to the field. I can really do about that, to be honest. Best choice would be my private eye. Uh, well, I guess the flyer. The flyer with lifelink is pretty is a pretty good option as well, so that's fair. And they had a way of getting rid of the private eye anyway, so. You don't realize how good Leyline Binding is until um, until you're running a, a, a five color deck. So you don't realize how good that can be because it becomes a it becomes a one cost binding, which is really annoying. So what we're gonna do here is we've lo we've lost. I'm gonna play this card just for the um, just for the uh, progress, and then we're just gonna concede. Not much else I can really do. I could have blocked, I could have prolonged it for probably another another round, but I, I did not want to do that. Either way, let's move on. Funnily enough, we actually didn't draw any cards that can go in as disgu for disguise, which I thought, which I think is kind of funny after I talked about them. But anyway, you can kind of see the idea of the deck to be completely honest i'm i'm not the biggest fan of this um sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but that's true for every deck 
It just takes a little bit of getting used to. Why do they... Fine. Man, I was like, they really want me to, uh... To have those particular cards, don't they? Unauthorized exit. Return target non-land permit to its owner's hands. Surveil one. So it looks like our opponent is most likely playing a is most likely playing a um, sacrifice. Some sort of sacrificial deck. Yeah, that wasn't the best. That wasn't the best move. I should have gotten rid of an unauthorized exit, but what are you gonna do? And there it goes. Man, sacrifice decks. They suck. Mainly because there's just nothing you can do unless you're running um, counter spells. I assume we'll use Vengeful Strangler when it dies. It does what it does. Create the strangle thing. What does that do? Okay. If you if you are not okay. Wow, okay, that's a nice little uh, combo there. So what does it do again? At the end of turn, whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player investigate. Not the greatest ability, but... Oh, they proliferated. Yeah, they proliferated, that's why. sacrifice it. That's fair. That's fair. And now, should they decide to steal my creatures, I can use unauthorized exit to pull it back. At this point, we're just kind of... We're honestly, at this point, I'm just backing. Back and forth.
We're actually gonna hold off on playing on playing that. Wait. Yeah. I'm gonna hold off just because that doesn't gain any bonus by sending out them both to be summoning sick. Honestly, at this point, I'm just being a little petty. <laughs> That's all I'm doing. <laughs> I'm being, I'm just being petty. It's kind of, it is a little, it is a little frustrating when you, um, when there's just not much you can really do. What does it do? It gains flying. That's fine. I'm not at all. Yeah, I don't care enough to worry about that. They're clearly not much of a. They don't. They clearly don't really use creatures that much. See, they're gonna. It's gonna die anyway because they're gonna sacrifice it. So. No sense in getting rid of my creature, though. I assume they probably have some way of dealing with that. Yep. They're just gonna do that, that's fair, I guess. Alright, we're just gonna concede. Though, I do like. I do. I don't. Obviously, we don't like going up against uh, steel and sacrifice decks, but it would be interesting to make one. Eh. Either way, with that, we are going to wrap it up. Not the best showing for this deck. I do apologize for that. It does have its moments where it works really, where it does work well, but maybe it needs some supplementing for with cards from other sets. I don't know. I don't know. White blue has not been my friend for the last few months, but eh, maybe, maybe next time. Who knows? But like I said, we're gonna wrap it up. If you enjoyed this episode, which I do sincerely hope you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you happen to be new to the channel, hello, welcome, and consider subscribing to stay up to date for whenever new content is posted. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next time.